Did you know that the human brain is literally wired for social connection? From the moment we're born, our brains are primed to seek out relationships, to bond, and to thrive through interactions with others. So what happens when we don't get those interactions? I'm Halsey Driscoll, a licensed clinician with 18 years of experience helping people understand how they can improve their mental health even in difficult circumstances. Here are my favorite insights and coping strategies for learning how isolation affects the brain. Insight number one, the neuroscience of connection. The human brain thrives on social interactions. When isolated, certain brain regions become more sensitive to threat signals, which works great in a survival scenario. In the modern world though, it just usually leads to increased anxiety and stress, since you're probably not running from too many saber-toothed tigers. We are neurologically designed to live with a group of people. That was a need for safety, for connection, and that has decreased as we have modernized, but it's really important to continue to have those connections. And sometimes it needs to be little steps of reaching out to connect with somebody, to be part of a group, to do something that might feel uncomfortable at first, but can lead to greater connection and satisfaction in those relationships. Insight number two, mood regulation. Isolation can play some tricks on your brain's mood regulation. Think of your brain as a social butterfly that loves interactions. When you're around others, it releases happy chemicals like serotonin and oxytocin, and those keep your mood balanced. But when you isolate yourself, it's like the butterfly wings are clipped. Those happy chemicals don't flow as much. This can lead to feelings of loneliness and even trigger stress-related chemicals like cortisol. So staying connected with people you care about isn't just about fun. It's like giving your brain a boost of positivity and better mood regulation. Insight three, cognitive consequences. Isolation can be a bit like putting your brain on standby mode. When you're socially engaged, your brain gets a workout. Conversations, shared experiences, and even disagreements keep your cognitive gears turning. But when you're by yourself, it's like those gears slow down. Your brain might not get the same mental challenges it needs to stay sharp. Over time, this lack of stimulation can affect your cognitive function, like memory problem solving and even your ability to focus. The same way your physical body gets sluggish when you haven't worked out in a while, your brain can start to feel groggy when you haven't had a lot of social interactions. Now that you are a brain expert, let's talk about what really matters. How you can use that knowledge to help you feel even better when you are alone. Strategy number one, virtual social connections. People have been feeling lonely for millions of years, but you have something they don't. A phone, a computer, a virtual reality headset where you can pretend to be a dinosaur with your cousin who lives in Cincinnati. Try using virtual interactions to bridge physical distance between you and your loved ones. It's like having a teleportation device that connects you to people anywhere. You can set up video calls with friends and family, join online groups that share your interests, or even take virtual classes. These interactions release those feel-good chemicals, boost your mood, and keep your cognitive gears spinning. Virtual connection can be hugely beneficial. However, sometimes that gets lost. When we talk about teens or young adults who spend a lot of time playing video games, while they may consider that connection, it often ends up being a source of loneliness and isolation. What we know is that it can be a good starting point for relationships as long as they are able to continue that relationship in another virtual way where they're able to have time set aside to talk about things that matter to them. Strategy number two, pursuing hobbies and interests. Have you ever seen a map of the brain showing how it lights up in different places? When you dive into things you love, it's like a burst of fireworks for your mind. Your brain gets busy creating new connections and pathways as you learn, create, or explore. Plus, it's like a built-in social event because you can connect with others who share your passions. You can work on rediscovering old hobbies that you have always enjoyed, or you can look to explore new ones altogether. Starting something new can be a little scary when you've been feeling depressed. So a lot of times it's easiest to start with really small baby steps. It can be attending the first hiking club or going to book club for the first time. Just getting something started feels like a little bit of hope. Strategy number three, practice mindfulness. Mindfulness can help you take your mind off of feelings of loneliness and discouragement. You can try meditation or taking a walk in the forest by yourself. 
While spending time by yourself sounds like the exact opposite of what you are trying to do to break out of isolation, it can actually help you feel better if you're focusing on the right things. When you practice mindfulness, you're tuning into your own thoughts and feelings in a non-judgmental way. Mindfulness also helps you stay grounded in the present moment, which can give you a break from thoughts like, I am going to be alone forever. That will help you recognize when feelings of loneliness arise and allow you to respond kindly to yourself. The more you practice being present and taking careful note of your thoughts, the more emotionally resilient you will be during times of loneliness and isolation. Strategy number four, set structured routines. Having a routine gives your day a reliable rhythm and your brain knows what to expect. This predictability can be a great friend in combating loneliness. You can schedule activities you enjoy, like a morning walk, a creative session, or even virtual hangouts with friends. This structure keeps you engaged leaving less room for those moments when loneliness tends to sneak in. Plus, routines connect you to a sense of purpose and accomplishment, which can greatly boost your mood and reduce feelings of isolation. We know an evening routine is incredibly helpful. Sleep hygiene is one thing that greatly impacts our brain, our mental health, and our sense of isolation. So it's really important that everyone has a set, regular night routine. Strategy number five, Seek professional support. Sometimes even the best workout regimen, mindfulness exercises, and routines just aren't enough. Therapists or counselors are like companions who specialize in helping you navigate through these feelings. They provide a safe space to share your thoughts and emotions without judgment while also equipping you with practical strategies to manage and overcome loneliness. It's not a sign of weakness, but rather a strong step towards taking care of yourself. Understanding how isolation affects the brain empowers us to take the right steps for our mental well-being. If you want to learn more about substance use or mental health treatment options, then go to sandstonecare.com or call the number below. We'll get to know you and your specific situation and connect you with the support you need, even if it's not with us. Change is possible and Sandstone Care is here to help.